Hi fans, Garrick right here asking you, do you like Hunger Games, Game of Thrones, or maybe even Dracula? We have these books and more coming to life as part of the Tilly Park's 16th annual Benches on the Avenue program. And today on Discover Tilly, we're going to get up close and personal with these benches and their artists. So don't touch that dial. Discover Tinley starts now. Welcome to Discover Tinley. I'm your host, Garrett Gray. Each and every year, for the past 16 years, Tinley Park has put out decorative art benches along Oak Park Avenue from May to October. And this year's theme is Prize Page Turners. So we're going to get up close and personal with some of the artists and their benches today. Hi, I'm here with first year bench artist Dante DiBartolo. Welcome to the show, Dante. Hello, thank you. Well, please tell the audience about the name of your bench and why you chose this as your story. Uh, the, the bench name is House Stark and House Targaryen, and I, I chose it because of the popularity of the TV show. Um, my cousin, Bob Renaud, called me up and said it would be a great opportunity to, to do something based on the show since it was the last season. And uh, we, we did it based on the, the first book, A Game of Thrones, which is uh, part of the book series, A Song of Ice and Fire. And uh, we just decided it would be a great opportunity to do something that would get some, you know, publicity for, for my artwork and do something that a lot of people out in the public would enjoy. And the public does enjoy this. I, uh, as many times as I go past this bench, I see people taking pictures on the Iron Throne here. So come on out to Oak Park Avenue and you get a picture on the Iron Throne. So, Dante, tell us, how long did it take you to... To construct this masterpiece, uh, it was uh, I added up all the hours between me and my my cousin and his friends. It was all it was about 120 hours total work. Wow, 120 hours! Well, excellent job. Uh, do you want to give uh, a shout out to your cousin's names? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my cousin is Bob Renaud. Um, his friends are Al Jebbins, uh, Terry Nugent, and Tom Liston, and they all helped me with uh, constructing it. Are they all Game of Thrones fans too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, two of them were new. They they started watching the show when we were working on it, but they're fans now. Okay, awesome. Now <laughs> uh, I, I got to ask, as a fan myself, what did you think? No spoiler, of course. Uh, what did you think of the ending? Oh, the ending. Yeah, it had some issues. Uh, I didn't hate it as much as other people did, but so you I didn't can, sign the petition, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did. I did share the petition because I knew a couple <laughs> of friends that did sign that, that did sign it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what was one of your favorite characters on? On Game oh, of Thrones. Uh, my favorite character was Arya Stark. I just loved her character, just how uh, how uh, smart and tough she was during the show. And you can kind of see as a kid how she, she grew up on the show as well. Oh, absolutely. And she was a fan favorite. Uh, my favorite was Cersei. <laughs> no apologies for that. <laughs> um, but tell us a little bit about the, the this concept, how you came up with the d design to have a dragon and a dire wolf. Uh, on the bench. Why well, did you choose the those two houses? Yeah, there were, there were a lot of houses and and so many characters on the show. It was just impossible to do everything. So I decided to pick the the two main the two main characters that were the good guys. The two two factions were uh, House Stark and House Targaryen, which was uh, House Stark, of course, were the were the the main characters with um, Jon Snow, and then House Targaryen was uh, Daenerys. Yeah, and and it played into the. The original book, yep. A Tale of Fire and Ice, yes. fire being the House Targaryen and ice, Winterfell, being House Stark. Yes, exactly. But, but excellent job. And I, being a first-year artist, is there, was there any surprises to you, pleasant surprises or otherwise, in terms of timetables? Um, it was actually, uh, it actually went pretty well. Uh, I didn't have uh, 
really any big problems. The, the main thing was is just I was really happy with how the 3D effect worked because we, we, we were able to gather up a, enough wood to, you know, do all the scales and the, the layering of the heads the way that I was hoping that it would would turn out. Yeah, it's excellent and it's very structurally sound. It's it's well well constructed, well put together. So your art just pops from the street and up close, it looks even better as well. Uh, so, Dante, uh, would you recommend other people to become bench artists in the future? Would you yourself do another bench? Yeah, I would. I would definitely recommend it. It's like most most people. A lot of people they don't get the chance to uh, express themselves artistically, and let alone do something in, in the public where the public can enjoy it and appreciate the art. And it always makes makes the neighborhood a more beautiful place. And uh, I would always recommend people taking that opportunity. Absolutely. Well, thank you for help beautifying Oak Park Avenue here in Tinley Park. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with an award-winning bench artist, Jennifer Lilly. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thank you for having me. And how many benches have you done? Oh, I don't know. Mid-30s somewhere. Mid-30s. That's pretty good. <laughs> and tell us about your new, latest and greatest creation here. Uh, this is my Hunger Games bench. Um, I wanted to depict something uh, that a lot of people knew that uh, made a statement. A absolutely. And... Uh, this is obviously uh, Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss, and I see there's mixed materials on uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character. Can you explain to the audience what those materials uh, are? They're washcloths. <laughs> washcloths. You, you use what you can find and what is readily available. It looks like an armored uh, suit here, but yet it's a common kitchen household uh, item right um and what about this this uh you have a little bit of a uh, it looks like geo grid i'm not even sure what it is i found it in my dad's garage and <laughs> it had the look that i wanted so i used it <laughs> excellent well one thing that shocks me about your bench that i did not see just driving by i had actually get up, up close and personal was that you actually have pages of the book burnt and also on t on the bench how did that come about um, the theme was books this year, and I thought it was really important that part of the book actually be on the bench. So the burning part kind of goes into the story. Absolutely. I'm not going to spoil anything for people who might haven't read them yet, but I thought it was important that the pages be on it. Yeah, they, so you can read the book or just come here and read the, the pages on the bench. Um, but excellent artwork, uh, as always. And you have some great portraits on the side boxes, too. Can you explain to the audience uh, some of those characters that you did portraits of? Um, well, obviously, I have Katniss, and then I have the two love interests on the front, and um, Effie on one side and Hamish on the other. I thought it was important to get as many main characters on the book on the bench as I could. Excellent. Yeah, and you did. It, uh, really good likenesses to the characters. Elizabeth Banks uh, it, It's pretty cool, so come out and check it out. What was the challenge this year of doing i know you did two benches we're going to get to that bench later on in the show what was the challenge doing uh the benches uh with the weather this year uh the weather is always an issue we work outside and it was very cold and wet we had <laughs> snow so i worked inside as much as i could and some of it just had to be left to the last minute and so you wait for those few good days and you pull it all together so how many hours did it take you to to work on this bench uh i don't even know <laughs> uh, I try not to think about it. I just keep going forward. Excellent. Well, Jennifer, it's a great masterpiece, and we're going to take a look at another one of your benches later on in the program. My next artist is no stranger to the bench program, having done over 40-plus benches here for Tinley Park. Please welcome to the show Nick Shulian. Welcome, Nick. Well, thank you. So tell us a little bit about your bench today. What's the theme? If you can't see already, <laughs> it's Dracula, and um, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of benches that are bright and cheery. And I thought, well, we've got to try something new. So I, I went for gloom, um, and tried to carry that through so that people could see something different. It is pretty ominous. I've drove past on Oak Park Avenue when at nighttime when the glow of the lamp is on it, and it is pretty ominous. But a great, great. Uh, book Dracula done by Bram Stoker. Uh, it's enduring. There's so many vampire shows and, and movies. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, a little fun fact about <laughs> Bela Lugosi, the actor you based this on. Well, you know, this was his most famous thing as, as playing Dracula, and so when he he died, he was buried in the in the costume uh, of, of Dracula, and I. Uh, 
I got the face portrait from someone's tattoo. Oh. And then worked around that to make the body fit that. Now, Nick, you were telling me earlier that, and I, and I know this from uh, your past work, you work exclusively outside. How was the challenge of working outside this winter with a polar vortex, snowing in April, and all of the above? Well, it was really, uh, really bad as far as rain goes. So uh, I, I don't like working in the house, but I did with the boxes. The problem is that when I brought the boxes out and put them on the bench, they didn't match because I didn't work with the same colors. So I had to pull colors from the bench back into the boxes so that they could all work together. Well, it looks fantastic. And I, I love, I love the castle, Dracula's castle here. And when you, it looks great from the street, but when you come up, you can see all the, the, the details and it looks even better. Um, speaking of some of the details, the side box also has some uh, Dracula references that are not the Bela Lugosi picture. Can you explain that? One is, uh, on this side is the uh, silent version, silent film version of uh, Dracula. So it's a silhouette. Um, it's usually done in black and white, but I added a little color to it. Uh, but it is uh, just as creepy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you got to check the backs out of these benches. Uh, tell the people, Nick, what's on the back of the Dracula bench. Well, this bench is painted black, but it has a face. Uh, a face that's about six feet wide and about three feet high of just the eyes of Dracula. So that uh, it, it's just another eerie thing I tried to do. Excellent, Nick. Another masterpiece. Thanks again oh, you're welcome. for being on the show. You're welcome. My next guest is Catherine Trezik. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about the bench you did. What's the book you based your bench on? Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. That's a good book, uh, a prize page turner. And what made you choose Huckleberry Finn? I like the theme of the story about freedom and friendship. Excellent. And what's the, what's the official name of your bench? Venture Down the River. Okay, excellent. And I see you do have uh, the, ben uh, the bench is built to be, look like a raft, and you got mm -hmm. uh, Huck Finn and Jim on, on the raft there. Mm -hmm. And I see you got some woodland creatures uh, on your bench as well, especially the rabbit. Check out these side benches. The rabbit is excellent. Thank you. It's all a part of the story. The rabbit's in the story. Every item on the bench is part of the story. What's the knife represent? The knife is one of the items. All those items over there are things they found on the island, and they're all useful items. Excellent. For survival. Now, you're a first-year bench artist. Yep. So how was the learning curve this first year as a bench artist? There was a learning curve. I do oil paintings and I had, did this in acrylic. So there's a difference from acrylics to oil painting from 2D to 3D. So I had to make some adjustments. Excellent. Well, it turned out really, really nice. And how long did it take you to work on your bench? It took two months. And one of the reasons was because I'm working in an unheated garage and we had a lot of cold days. So wow. I had to work in between those. Cold days. Yeah, I'd say that's an understatement with po a polar vortex. We had a lot, a lot of <laughs> unseasonably cold days. Cold, for rainy, you know. All of the above. Right. I, I agree. Now, I learned that you recently read Huckleberry Finn. Right, as an adult. As an adult on a Kindle. Not on a paperback book, but on a Kindle. The new age. <laughs> and uh, so obviously this was at the front of your mind when you when you chose Huckleberry Finn mm -hmm. and it's a very popular book because there's they've done so many movies and TV shows regarding Huckleberry Finn mm -hmm. and a lot of other Mark Twain stories as well. Um, so it's a great topic for a prize page turner. And how does it feel to be a first year bench artist? It is fun. It was an adventure and <laughs> everything was new and we didn't realize how heavy the bench would be. But my oh. husband helped me um, pick it up. He helped me do priming, little things like that. Excellent. Um, so he gets like uh, uncredited credit there. Yeah, he gets credit. He helped crit critique my work. You know, well, maybe change that a little bit. Or, so he was very helpful. He's Either very way, supportive. Either way, it turned out great, Catherine. Welcome to the bench program. Would you recommend other artists to become part of this program? I would. If you love to do, be creative and you like to try something new, it's fun and rewarding. 
Well, thanks again for being on the show, Catherine. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm here with first-year bench artist Rick Villarreal. Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. Tell us about the book you chose. Well, um, I had a few choices, but um, I wanted my kids to be involved with this also. So as I was reading a few different titles, my son was like, hey, Pirates, Treasure Island. That's uh-huh. the first thing that came to, uh, to his mind. So um, I just ran with that. Excellent. Yeah, and w- there's no quintessential pirate book than Treasure Island. It has the, the, the pirate with the parrot on and the one leg, Long John Silver. Right, so right. a classic. Now, Rick, tell us a little bit about your artwork. This looks airbrushed. Correct. Um, so what I try to do is uh, bring it up, uh, update it a bit, you know, make it a little fun. Um, and I figure I'd use my strongest skills, which is airbrushing. Um, so that's what everything is done with an airbrush. Um, I brought in some tattoo kind of elements. I'm also a tattoo artist, so that's why I brought in some of this old school wave Sailor Jerry type of artwork here, along with the map in the background there, as you can kind of see, kind of faded back yeah, there. It, it looks awesome. And so you're a tattoo artist, no Correct. wonder. I mean, that, that skull, if you come here on Oak Park Avenue in Tinley Park, you'll see how it just simply pops from the street. And I see you got the octopus too. Is that was that one of your kids' uh, suggestions? Yeah, you know I took some of their suggestions. Uh, there was a lot of other stuff they wanted to throw in there. My daughter wanted to throw in some mermaids and Little Nemo and all that stuff. So it was getting out of hand. Uh, so I had to rein them back in. So, um, but I did add some uh, fun elements like this movable wheel here, so that kids oh, can wow. come and like have some fun. It's kind of interactive too. So cool. And I heard that you found out that you got accepted to the bench program when you were at Treasure Island <laughs> at Disney World right. in Florida. Yeah, that's correct. We're out in Florida. <laughs> uh, I didn't have any um, thoughts that I would be accepted, and uh, when, while I was out there, I got the notification that hey. We accepted your design and uh, go for it. So I'm like, I, it was, it, it's, a, it's an honor, um, a great surprise, obviously. But, um, yeah, it was not expected. So, Rick, I got to ask, how was it like when you drove your kids past your bench? It's fun because um, the first time when I saw it, I was more excited than them, I think. <laughs> um, and then when they saw, because they, they, they were in my shop, you know, helping me, uh, supporting me, of course, and uh, they saw it out here on, on the on the on the sidewalk here. They they got really excited, it was like Daddy's bench, Daddy's bench, and so um, it's it's an honor, and I'm very proud, and um, I'm I'm happy as an artist to give back. So absolutely, it's, it's a, would it's you a do the pleasure. bench program oh, again? Definitely. Would you recommend it to yes, other artists yes. to get involved and definitely. be a part of the community yeah, here I in Tilly Park? It's fun. Um, you, you, there's no uh, real um, egos floating around, you know. So it's just you're, you're having fun. It's good to give back um, and then have people enjoy your artwork. It's, just, it's an awesome feeling. So Absolutely. Well, thanks for being part of the program, Rick. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with first-year bench artist Tyler Stucker. Tyler, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. So tell us about your bench. What's the name of your bench? The bench is the Charlie Brown bench. It uh, features Linus and uh, Sally, Charlie Brown, and, of course, Snoopy. Yeah, I see Snoopy is uh, dressed as the Red Baron. Yeah, it's an uh, all-time favorite Halloween special, The Great Pumpkin, so we had to include them. Absolutely. So why did you choose Charlie Brown as your theme this year for your bench? Uh, it's uh, kind of a family-oriented, uh, you know, growing up, we uh, read the Charlie Brown books, we watched the specials, and it was just uh, it's just a uh, chance to bring it to all the kids and uh, families that might not have a chance to read the books or watch the specials. Absolutely, and they're so popular. They've been enduring uh, before my generation, and I'm sure it's going to endure for generations to come. I remember going to the library at my grammar school to check out the Charlie Brown books. Um, so tell us a little bit about the process of doing a bench. Uh, how long did it take you to finish, and uh, were there some surprises that you weren't expecting as a first-year artist? Uh, it, was a, it was a ton of work. It was uh, more than I expected, but it was, uh, it was fun. It was a blast. I mean, the most challenging aspect for me was probably painting, just because I, uh, I never, uh, I mean, I've always did art growing up, but uh, painting on wood and clear coating, it was just a, a whole nother, whole nother step to the art process for me. Uh, well, yeah, but it, but it turned out great. And, and speaking of the construction process, I think your side boxes are amazing. Uh, this. Snoopy's doghouse absolutely has been converted into a, a doghouse. It flares out, and these side boxes come out uh, square. So you converted that, and it's a great illusion. Yeah, it's, uh, one of the main things I really wanted to do was uh, basically, if I wanted to make a doghouse, I just wanted to recreate Snoopy's. That's uh, so. 
I did as best as I could. Yeah, it looks great. Now, tell me, is there anybody that helped out on the bench that is uncredited that you want to give credit to while we have a chance? Yeah, for sure. Um, my girlfriend or fiance, she definitely helped out with, uh, I have two little girls, so two little girls and creating a bench is a lot of work. She helped out with keeping the girls busy. And is, if they're busy, that means I get to stay busy with working on the bench. Excellent. Now I hear you're also uh, an artist in Midlothian and you've won awards in Midlothian. Can you tell the people about that? Oh yeah, uh, October it's big for Halloween. We do a big uh, haunted house dis uh, display called Stuttgart Horror. We uh, won uh, best decorated house in Midlothian this past Halloween. We do tons of wood props and uh, decorations and all that. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be in for it again uh, this upcoming Halloween. Excellent, Tyler. Well, thank you for being on the show. We appreciate your time and we appreciate your awesome looking bench. I'm here with Jennifer Bullard of The Painted Turtle. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. Well, please tell us about your bench, uh, The Big Friendly Giant. Yes. So The Big Friendly Giant, we chose this one just for the representation of friendship and overall just meeting friends in the unlikely places. We have a big old giant's head right here and we have our handprints all done by the artists that worked on that. Excellent. Now, how many artists did work on this bench? We had about 10. So that's a good, good bunch. <laughs> yeah, that is quite a bit uh, to coordinate on uh, the real estate of a bench. There's not so much space to, to have all those artists work, but it came out fantastic. Thank now, you. Now, how did you guys come about choosing this theme, the Big Friendly Giant? So what we did is we actually had two options. We had Lord of the Rings and the BFG, and we took it to a vote. So all the artists that wanted to work on it, they all voted, and BFG actually won. So. Excellent. Well, n two good choices. I, I am a sci-fi guy, so I do <laughs> like Lord of the Rings, but this is pretty good, and it's an enduring story. They've done movies on it. And could you tell the people a little bit about the story and the meaning behind the story? So the story starts off with a girl that is in an orphanage, and she ends up falling asleep. She sees this giant and he ends up whisking her away into this dreamland. And all the while, she's very scared, but ultimately they become really good friends. They learn about the power of friendship and also meeting unlikely people and becoming friends that way. So that's ultimately why we chose it. It's very endearing. The movie was awesome. So the book was even better. You're right. And the book usually is better than the movies. <laughs> and as you mentioned, there's a great moral behind it, not judging mm -hmm. a book by its cover. and. Could you tell us a little bit more about the Painted Turtle and the artist at the Painted Turtle? So the Painted Turtle is actually an art studio for adults with intellectual disabilities. So they come here and this is their job. They earn an income selling out their art. They make all the art in the studio and then we go out and sell it for them. So this is really their job and their passion. So th making the bench was really fun for them. And this is their third bench, I understand, that Correct. the Painted Turtle has done. Correct. And you are second bench overseeing. How was it, <laughs> yes. how was it like the second time around, Jennifer? It was very fun. Um, we had a whole different crew that worked on it. So it was a lot of fun seeing their take on the BFG. They actually sculpted all this. Um, I just kind of orchestrated like, okay, this is going to go here, here. And they really just brought it to life. Excellent. And was it easier the second time around? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Less hectic, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> well, Jennifer, thanks for being on the show and Thank you. continued success to the Painted Turtle. Thank you so much for having me. Well, just walking back down Oak Park Avenue, we ran into Nick Shuglin again with one of his other masterpieces this year, Up. <laughs> Nick, welcome back. Well, thank you. So, what made you choose Up as a story to display this year? with the benches? Well, I thought it's uh, uh, exciting, it's, it's bright. Uh, I had the challenge of making balloons like that look like they're floating. Uh, and it's in contrast with the Dracula bench I did. It's a complete opposite. Yeah, uh, so, Amen, it's more colorful, uh, more up and less yeah. ominous. Um, but tell us about those balloons. I see all these colored cups now. Are those initially colored that way? No, they, they were clear cups I got at the dollar store and oh. then I spray painted them uh, and then glued them all on. Yeah, they so. look excellent. I, I I thought they were their original color, but that's all spray paint. And what's behind the bowls? Uh, it's a uh, foam. Uh, uh, I forget the name of it though, but yeah. it's a foam that is like uh, to fill cracks. And so it you can see it's uh, coming out from behind some of them now. Uh, but it holds them on. I didn't have to glue them on. 
that was enough to hold them in place. So, uh, and I had to do it all laying down and then putting it up. So I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to look like at yeah. that time. Or if it would stay up, maybe? Or if it would stay up, yeah. But you always use materials, and you're so good with using mixed materials. I see even the old gentleman from Up has white hair you could actually brush with a comb. Yeah. Uh, you, you told me this was a leftover from another bench yeah. that you did. I did uh, Snow White with all uh, uh, seven dwarfs with beards last year, and this was left over so that... Uh, you know, I usually save those things and figure out what I can do with them. So that's what I did with this. Well, it's good to conserve and recycle your materials. And then, again, Nick, your painting is always on spot. These look totally like the characters that I see on TV. Uh, and which one is your favorite to paint? Who uh, was your favorite to paint? He, he was. He was the most difficult. Why is that? <laughs> because of all the little circles and, uh, oh, uh, you know, the horn and uh, backpack. and uh, But, he, you know, it was a challenge that I enjoyed. So, Well, I've seen a lot of people sitting on the bench enjoying it. So thanks again, Nick, for contributing uh, to the welcome. bench program. You're welcome. We're back with Jennifer Lilly at her next bench. Jen, can you explain to the people uh, what this story is based on? Uh, this is a book titled A uh, Fish Out of Water. It's about a little boy who gets a fish and is told to only feed him so much and doesn't listen to the rules, and his fish grows and grows and grows. A kid not listening to the rules, who would think? Um, but I, your bench is amazing. In fact, uh, it reminds me of those, those older books that were done in like monochromatic colors. Uh, in this case, you have a few more than just one color, but uh, the big orange fish and that kind of that, that lime green or blue, sea blue color. Uh, it looks excellent, and your and your bench tells the story. Can you tell the people what that story involves? Oh, well, it, it involves this little boy, and he gets the fish, and Mr. Otto is showing him how to feed his fish, and the bench and the boxes kind of depict what happens to the fish throughout the course of the story. I agree. I mean, I, I walked around the bench. I wasn't sure if I had read this story as a little kid, but I noticed that I could follow along with the pictures and understand uh, the dilemma here with the uh, with the fish getting bigger and bigger as the kid feeds them. Now, interesting fact that I learned is that the author of this book is was actually the wife of Dr. Seuss. I did not know that. <laughs> so you learn something new every day. But I, I know there's rhyming in the book, right? Definitely. In terms of uh, instruction on how to feed and when to feed the fish. Yes. Can you give us some of that instruction if you recall it? Uh, when you feed a fish, never feed him a lot, so much and no more, never more than a spot, or something may happen, you never know what. That sounds like a member of the Dr. Seuss family for it sure, does. Jennifer. It does. Um, well, so this book is special to you because you read it as a kid and now you read it to your kids, is that true? Right, I, I read it, um, my mother read it to me when I was a small child and then I read it to my kids when they were little. So it's just a, a really special book in my heart. Well, that's good. And how long did it take you to work on this bench compared to, say, your Hunger Games bench? Uh, well, this one is a bit simpler, so it didn't take quite as much time, um, but it was a lot of fun to do. I really enjoyed doing this one. What did your kids think of the bench when they saw it? They thought it was pretty neat, reminded them of their childhood. Thanks for your contribution to the program. All these years, having great bench after great bench, continued success. Thank you. Well, that's our show for this month. Thanks to all our artists for being on the show. And if you want to meet the artists, come on out to Harmony Square on August 10th to meet them at 6 p.m. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next month.